Can you tell us what we have here? Just about everything. From well, there's only one fan tail. There's one fan tail down there. They're all just your commoner garden racing pigeons. Uh, the small squealier sounds you hear, the squabs, the gickness, the young ones, you know. They um, they they breed all year round these type, you know. Whereupon the the uh, the wild wood quest doesn't breed at all, just a certain time of the year, you know. They breed all year round these particular pigeons. Um, do you race do you race these at all? No, we don't race them at all. No. They're just Charlie's pets again, are they? That's it, just small pets, more of the same. What about feeding them? I mean, they feed themselves, they go off and rob other people's corn and sort of basically what they do, and they need an extra bit of feeding then in the winter, you know. <laughs> Apart from that, they... Uh, that's, they a very, that's a very clever arrangement for this. It time. is, yeah, it is, yeah. Other people uh, kind of feed them, all right, during the summer. <laughs> well, I mean, they don't, Harvest time so they don't really cost you. It's just to have these birds around that actually uh, increase the quality of life in your well, farm yeah, here. Yeah, they do all right, but they don't, they don't take up that, but they take up a lot of space, some of them, like hens and ducks and things, that use up a lot of space in terms of sheds and that, you know. But um, as regards the pigeons, I suppose, well, they sleep anywhere, mostly up on rafters and things, so they don't take up much space. They leave a fair bit of dirt behind them, though, all right. I, I'd say they would, yeah. <laughs> well, it's mostly confined to this. Oh, this particular area, yeah. the majority of them is here, all right, yeah. Though they are in other sheds as well. Any idea, what would be the oldest bird that you have here? Is it? Oh, I wouldn't have a clue on what the oldest one would be. Hard to know. We have had them stolen before, and they've uh, they've often been taken away for oh, sometimes a good distance away. You know, even when they're very very young and they've never actually flown. And they say that if you're going to take pigeons to rear them, the best time to take them is before they've ever flown out of the out of the loft. Right. So that that way, wherever they begin they to fly is their home. Right. But sometimes the mistake these fellas have made is that they've taken some of the pigeons that have that, were, that have flown as well as the young ones, and yeah. they won't leave the other loft until the others are old enough to fly. Then they then bring them with them. Ah, clever. And the whole lot come back. You know. That's very very good. <laughs> they've actually. So done that's that. a, that's a, that's a point that we shouldn't really make known to. Not not to the vast <laughs> majority, no. Not to the criminal element, anyway. <laughs> But it's great, it's smashing and it's a great, it's a great feeling just to be here with all these uh, fluttering around. You let them out at certain times, do you? Yeah, well, I mean, they come back around more or less suits them and they'll always come in before dark, you know. Yeah. If they get a scare now with a hawk or something like that, it's very hard to get them in for days afterwards. Because they, they're, they're afraid very, very to fly. Nervous. They're very, very nervous. No, that's not that. They're quite the opposite. They'll fly too often. The slightest thing moves in the air and they'll flutter around for hours. It's very hard to get them to land and stay easy on the, on the, on the rooftops, you know. Yeah. They tend to go in all directions. So if you want to let them out, you just take a stone out of one of the walls here. Yeah, take a do? stone out of the wall and they'll just take it oh, out. Ah, that's yeah. very good. You'll do it now if you like. That's, that's, that's very clever. You can get them coming out, guys. Yeah. Uh, I think Charlie's in there hurrying them up, is he? Rustling out, right, Jim? Yeah. Now, there we are. How do your dogs get on with the birds? No trouble at all. They're, they're, they're quite used to them, so they uh, they never put any pass on them. If you brought a strange dog in here, they'd probably spend most of the time chasing them, trying to kill them, you know, but... Um, yes, but they've been brought up with them. They've been brought up with them, and they're quite accustomed to them, you know. They don't, yeah. they don't put any notes on them at all, really. It's not a great sound, the fluttering of the feathers. A bit of feathers there. You took a good few mattresses with them, now. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how many pigeons you have all together? Wouldn't have an early. Would you? How many hens would you have? Uh, about 30. And geese? Five. <laughs> and your ducks? No, about three most of 25. Them. Would you? Well, 18. 22, exactly. Like, yeah. <coughs> and you have. Yeah, they are a different breed of ducks. They're mostly ducks. What, what kind of ducks are they? Muscovy ducks. R that's, that sounds Russian. 
um, I'm not quite sure what they are, but they're musky be ducks. They're more like geese than ducks. They graze grass where ordinary ducks don't. And they, um, they're completely different. They're more docile than ordinary ducks. They don't make much sound around them. They just stand around like them. Yeah. You could walk right up to them now and they wouldn't, wouldn't be bothered with you, you know. How did you come to come across those? How did you get those into Well, actually, um, a fellow in the locality, Nick Monks, uh, brought them out. He, he hatched them out. And he, the actual ducks that he had were a subject of a BBC documentary on wildlife. Because the, um, it hasn't been shown yet, sure it hasn't. No, the mother hatched up on the top of a high tree. I've heard about that. I've heard about that, have you? That's right. And she hatched them out to see, and so they're the, the so net result. Like oh, these are directly descendant from those, she, from those particular the ones, yeah. And, they're, and they're the second clutch. The second clutch. From up on a tree? Yeah. So yeah. actually, the ones that were looking at now were actually, well, they were hatched up on a tree. But well, these weren't exactly they weren't actually, actually, no, but no, the other ones were. The first clutch The first, the first clutch. Yeah. They hatched them on the, on the ground the second time when they shed. So that's, that's probably why they're all on the ground, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. They don't fly as much as the others. <laughs> what are they, is that what you call a guinea? What do they call those? Shit those over at the bale of hay? Yeah, yeah, they're guinea hens, all right. The guinea and hen and a guinea cock. And uh, th again, they're just decorative purposes here. You don't that's you really it, no, no, consumed no. one of those yet? No, I haven't tried it, no. The eggs are quite a delicacy, I believe, are right? You haven't tasted those, no? I have, yeah. Very hard shell, man. Very, very hard shell. And how would you, uh, just a probably strong taste? No, no, very mild actually. Are oh, they? Right. Yeah, more like a, a battery hen egg than a, even a yeah. than the ordinary free range egg. You know? Were you the first? If you were the first in your house to eat one of those, you to eat a guinea a guinea egg. Yeah. You would have been a guinea pig. Probably so. <laughs> 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 <laughs>